Hello and welcome to News at 6 on Rajya Sabha TV where we bring you the top international, national uh, business and sports stories that happen through the day. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. Let us begin with the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi wraps up a five-nation tour with a successful last stop in Mexico, secures the country's backing for India's NSG membership bid. Fired by India's success in securing backing, Pakistan now steps up diplomatic efforts to gather support for its inclusion to the NSG. Union ministers spar over the root culling of animals in states. Women and Child Development Minister Menaka Gandhi accuses Environment Ministry of having a lust for killing. And Israel retaliates to Palestinian attack in Tel Aviv, clamps down on Palestinian movements and boosts security. Entry permits for 83,000 Palestinians are suspended. On a top story this evening, after wrapping up a successful five-nation tour, Prime Minister Narendra Modi left for India today from Mexico. In the final leg of his visit, Modi held wide-ranging talks with the Mexican leadership and secured the support from the country on NSG. The Mexican support comes just in time as Nuclear Suppliers Group has called an extraordinary plenary meeting in Vienna in which India's application for membership is expected to be taken up. Mexico announced its support to India's bid for membership of the elite nuclear suppliers group after wide-ranging talks between President Enrique Peña Nieto and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. With this, the Prime Minister has secured the backing of two key NSG members, including Switzerland, for India's bid to secure membership of the 48-nation club that controls trade in advanced nuclear technologies. NSG membership will give India access to technology that will help it in a variety of areas, ranging from medicine to building nuclear plants. This also represents a historic policy shift for Mexico, which has held a firm position on nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation for decades. Celebramos la adhesión que India ha hecho al acuerdo de París, precisamente sobre cambio climático, y por otro lado, y no por ello menos importante, México reconoce el interés de la India de incorporarse al grupo de suministradores nucleares. Thank President Peña Nieto for his positive and constructive support for India's membership of the Nuclear Suppliers Group. Excellency, I see in you a reformer and believer in the destiny of this great country. I too am focused on reforming India's economic and governance structures. This is one area where our sharing of best practices can benefit both our societies. Both nations also signed a 10-year bilateral investment promotion deal to promote economic ties. Mexico also extended support to India's International Solar Alliance Initiative, which was launched at the Paris Climate Talks last year. Global issues were a major focus in the brief five-hour working visit. In a special gesture, the Mexican president drove Prime Minister Narendra Modi to a restaurant for a vegetarian Mexican dinner. This was the first prime ministerial visit from India to Mexico after former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh's visit in 2012 for the G20 summit. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, Pakistan has asked NSG member states to be objective and non-discriminatory while deciding on expanding the grouping's membership. Islamabad has also stepped up diplomatic efforts to raise support for its inclusion in the elite 48-nation bloc. Now, Pakistan held a briefing session for the NSG country's diplomatic missions ahead of the group's plenary session in Vienna. 
The briefing is uh, said to be part of its uh, ongoing diplomatic efforts for mobilizing support for the membership of the group. Pakistan also cautioned the NSG countries against making any country-specific exemptions, which would negatively impact strategic stability in South Asia. Well, the meeting seems to be a part of Pakistan's efforts to stop uh, India gaining membership of the group. China has reportedly assured Pakistan that it would not support India's membership until Pakistan was also given the same treatment. Pakistan, remember, had uh, formally applied for the NSG membership last month. And back home, a special trial court in Ahmedabad uh, deferred the quantum of sentence in the Gulbarg Society massacre to Friday. Well, 14 years after the riots, uh, the court convicted 22 of the 66 accused on 6th of June. The court had judged 11 guilty of murder and 13 guilty of lesser crime. Now, defence lawyers uh, in the case have demanded uh, minimum punishment uh, for the convicts, arguing that the witnesses in the case have not been able to recognise them. Meanwhile, the prosecution has argued for life imprisonment, if not capital punishment for all the accused, calling it a rarest of the rare case. It also argued for equal punishment for all 24 accused, as it was a case of mass murder. 69 people were killed in Gulbarg society, including a former Congress MP S. Jafri during the 2002 Gujarat riots. Well, moving on to the other big story of the day, two union ministers, Menaka Gandhi and Prakash Javrekar, on Thursday locked horns over culling of animals. Over reports of the killing of 200 Neil guys and a wild boar in Bihar recently, a union minister for women and child development, Menaka Gandhi, slammed the environment ministry, saying it had a lust for killing animals, even as the environment minister, Prakash Javrekar, defended the action. Two union ministers are at loggerheads over the culling of Nilgais. Union Women and Child Development Minister Menika Gandhi raised a storm when she accused the Environment Ministry of harboring a lust for killing animals. Gandhi blames Environment Minister Prakash Javrekar for giving permission to kill the endangered animals, calling the culling a massacre. Javrekar, however, was quick to counter the allegations, saying it was done on the request of states to prevent crop damage. Environment Ministry is writing every state that you tell who will kill you, we will give you the right to kill you. In Bengal, they told us to kill you. In Himachal, they told us to kill you. In Goa, they told us to kill you. Although their own wildlife department has said that we don't want to kill you. Don't go back to us. I don't know what is going on to kill you. What is the purpose of killing you? When the people of the law बहुत तकलीफ होती है उनके फसल का पूरा नाश होता है तो अगर राज्य सरकार प्रस्ताव भेजती है तो ही हम किसी विशेष भाग के लिए और किसी विशेष काल के लिए ही एक साइंटिफिक मैनेजमेंट के लिए वो राज्य सरकार के प्रस्ताव को मंजूरी देती है ये केंद्र सरकार का कार्यक्रम नहीं है The Environment Ministry's move has drawn flag from animal rights groups as well. Instead of ordering to kill these animals, the ministry should have done a proper survey and census and should have worked on rehabilitating these animals into the wild rather than just ordering them to be killed. Our wildlife protection is not our responsibility, nor our responsibility. On moral grounds, Mr. Prakash Javrekar should resign. This is a shame. Menika's objection comes after the Environment Ministry allowed the culling of Nilgai, wild boars, elephants, peacock and monkeys in different states. The demand to kill these animals was accepted on account of the damage they were causing to crops, property and life. The ministry's memorandum passed in December 2015 states that wild animals which destroy crops should be treated as vermin. Bureau Report, Raju Sabha TV. Well, moving on in the bulletin now, well, India's uh, daily death toll uh, due to road accidents touched alarming levels in 2015. Now, driver's fault was the biggest factor. Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari said on Thursday that the government will bring a road safety bill in the next session of Parliament to arrest the number of uh, fatalities in road accidents. Indian roads, which account for the highest fatalities in the world, became more dangerous in 2015. The number of road accidents increased by 2.5% from 2015 to 
from 4 lakh 89000 in 2014 to 5 lakh in 2015 around 1374 accidents and 400 deaths occur every day on indian roads which translates into 57 accidents and 17 lives every hour about 54.1% of all persons killed in road accidents were in the age bracket of 15 to 34 years the number was highest in tamil nadu hamare jo member of parliament hai unki adhyakshata mein bhi ye accident kaise hum rok sakte iske liye committee banayenge isme collector hoga sp hoga traffic ke log honge ngos honge social worker honge aur hum log kuch public representative honge और उस हर महीने में दो महीने में जितने एक्सीडेंट्स हुए वो स्पॉट पर आवश्यकता होगी तो जाएंगे यूनियन मिनिस्टर नितिन गडकरी हैज एक्सप्रेस्ड होप दैट द रोड सेफ्टी बिल विल क्रॉस ऑल हर्डल्स एंड गेट क्लियर्ड इन द मॉनसून सेशन ऑफ पार्लियामेंट गडकरी सेड वंस द लॉ इज एनैक्टेड इट वुड ओवरहॉल द सेक्टर बाय ब्रिंगिंग ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड कर्बिंग माल प्रैक्टिसेस हमने सुझाया है कि कंप्यूटर परीक्षा लेगा और ऐसे 20 सेंटर हमने खोल दिए ऑलरेडी पुणे में है कलकत्ता में है राजस्थान में है कि वो ट्रक वाला पूरा वहाँ ग्राउंड में जाके पूरा चलाएगा और कंप्यूटर उसके परीक्षा लेगा और पास या फेल डिक्लेयर करेगा द न्यू रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड सेफ्टी बिल सीक्स टू कम डाउन हेवली ऑन ट्रैफिक ऑफेंडर्स एंड प्रपोजेस टी पेनल्टीज ऑफ अप टू थ्री लाख अलॉन्ग विद मिनिमम सेवन ईयर इम्प्रिजनमेंट फॉर डेथ ऑफ अ चाइल्ड इन सर्टन सर्कमस्टेंसिस बिसाइड्स ह्यूज फाइन्स फॉर ड्राइविंग वायोलेशन कृति मिश्रा राज्यसभा टीवी The Central Bureau of Investigation of the CBI today questioned Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Veer Bhadra Singh in connection with a disproportionate assets case. The CBI had initiated an inquiry against Singh into assets accumulated during 2009 to 2012 when he was a union minister. Veer Bhadra Singh had assets worth over 6 crore rupees in his name and his name of his family members which were found to be disproportionate to his known sources of income. The ongoing uh, row involving AAP MLA Alka Lamba and BJP legislator O.P. Sharma was postponed to for Friday for arguments by the Delhi High Court. This after the two sides had reached a no settlement. Now Sharma is accused of uh, making derogatory remarks against Lamba. Major General Per Gustav Lodin of uh, the Swedish military will be the new head uh, for the United Nations missions uh, tasked with monitoring the ceasefire between India and Pakistan in Jammu and Kashmir. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon appointed him as uh, the chief military observer and head of mission for the United Nations military observers group in India and Pakistan. Uh, Major General Lodin succeeds uh, Major General uh, Delali is Johnson Seki of Ghana, who completes his two-year assignment on 2nd of July. Now, India says the UNMOGIP has outlived its utility and is irrelevant after the Shimla Agreement. And in News at 6, we'll take a very short break. Coming up ahead, US President Barack Obama says he's worried about the future of the Republican Party. We'll tell you why after this very short break. Stay with us. Welcome to this episode of Ereka. We are with us Dr. Ajit Kembavi. The IAU provides a truly wonderful platform in which uh, various matters concerning the systematic development of astronomy are concerned. And the fact that I'm a vice president uh, allows me, gives me the opportunity uh, to push more and more Indian astronomers into it. And uh, because we have to get into positions uh, where we can influence very long-term policy. Long -term. Watch Eureka with Professor Ajit K. K. Mbhavi, Vice President, International Astronomical Union, only on Rajya Sabha TV.
Welcome back after the break and now continuing uh, with our special series on drought crisis in the country. Now, Junjun district in Rajasthan is uh, famous for its heritage sites and old mansions that are also a huge tourist attraction. However, these days the district is uh, known more for its acute water crisis. With the dense population, a large portion of the district has now fallen into the dark zone. Here is our special report. This is Gothra village in Junjunu district. In the 51 wards of the village live over 17,000 people and most of them depend on agriculture and livestock breeding for their livelihoods. So not surprisingly, there are about 7,500 animals in the village and this is turning out to be the biggest problem this drought season. When humans are thirsting for every drop, what will the animals do? The responsibility of gathering water lies with the women of the village. With no water sources, most households now depend on expensive water tankers. Each tanker costs 400 rupees but delivers saline water which is not fit for drinking. Gothra is one of the biggest villages in the panchayat. Despite having a reputation, the village is having trouble getting the attention of the district administration. पीने के लिए तो पानी है ही नहीं जो एक आरओ प्लांट लगा हुआ है वो भी काफी 4 महीने से काफी बंद पड़ा है बिल्कुल उसको अधिकारियों को अवगत करवा दिया उस बारे में और कोई भी सुनवाई नहीं हो पा रही है Almost the entire Junjunu district is under the dark zone owing to the availability of only saline water people are now falling sick at least 252 villages have fallen prey to fluoride and the situation is only becoming worse with each passing day from Gotra village in Junjunu district in Rajasthan, this is Arvind Kumar Singh's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And to our big international story now, Israel has suspended entry permits for 83,000 Palestinians after two gunmen of Wednesday's market attack were identified as being from West Bank. Now, Israel has described the attack as a savage crime of murder and terrorism. A knee-jerk reaction from Israel a day after the horrific shooting at an upscale market in Tel Aviv in which four people were killed and 16 others were wounded. Israel has revoked all permits for Palestinians from the West Bank or Gaza to enter Israel or travel abroad. The move which affects 83,000 people means Palestinians will not be able to travel to worship at the al Aska Mosque during Ramadan. The West Bank-based Palestinian Authority has not yet commented on the incident. This is a, a savage uh, crime of murder uh, and terrorism in the heart of Tel Aviv. Uh, it's done by uh, criminal terrorists who don't value human life. Uh, we're going to take the necessary steps to uh, attack the attackers and to defend those who need to be defended. Meanwhile, Israel's military is deploying two additional battalions involving hundreds of troops in the West Bank. In Tel Aviv, extra police units have been dispatched, mainly around the city's bus and train stations. Hamas praised the attack in a statement, although they did not claim responsibility for it. Unfortunately, every time we think that we're getting to uh, some ceasefire and peace and quiet, and opening our borders towards uh, uh, the Palestinians. It seems like they never, they, ne they never learn. They don't care if they're hurting us or hurting their own people. Wednesday's night incident, which is the deadliest in a wave of attacks since October, was condemned by both the US and Britain. In a statement, Hamas warned the Zionists would have more surprises during the Islamic holy month of Ramadan, which started this week. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, news uh, from the U.S. now. In appearing on uh, Jimmy Fallon's uh, The Tonight Show, U.S. President Barack Obama had a quick answer when asked about his thoughts on the Republican presidential nominee. Obama said that he was worried about the future of the Republican Party in light of the rise of a presumptive GOP presidential nominee, Donald Trump. Obama said uh, that the public should uh, want a Republican nominee to be somebody who could do the job if they win, implying that he did, does not think Trump could. 
Obama, however, praised his fellow Democrats for a healthy presidential primary process. Obama has been increasingly critical of Donald Trump as the primary season ticks on, though he seldom mentions the presumptive Republican nominee by name. While the show was taped in New York one day after Hillary Clinton's big primary election wins in California and elsewhere, catapulted her to victory over her Democratic opponent, Bernie Sanders. First of all, you've given him some pretty good advice so far, if you have. Uh, yeah. But has he called and talked to you? I would call no. you if I was right. No. no, he hasn't. No. No. <laughs> not, that, not that I know. No. <laughs> well, do, you, do you think the Republicans are, are, are happy with their choice? Um, we are, but I don't know how they're... <laughs> I don't know how they're feeling. <laughs> so, actually, you know what? That, that, <laughs> that, 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 that was too easy, but... but I, and, the truth is, actually, I, I am worried about the Republican Party, and, and I know that sounds... Uh, uh, you, know, yeah. you know what it sounds like. But, yeah. um, but democracy works, this country works, when... You have two parties that are serious and trying to solve problems, and they've got philosophical differences, and they have fierce debates, and they argue, and they contest elections. But at the end of the day, what you want is a healthy two-party system. Well, news from South Asia now, and Japan has expressed its concern over a Chinese Navy ship sailing close to its territorial waters in the East China Sea, increasing tensions over the disputed area. The Japanese government said that China had sent a warship for the first time in the disputed waters near a group of islands known as the Senkaku in Japan and Diaoyu in China. Now, Japan has summoned the Chinese ambassador over the incident. China, meanwhile, said that it was looking into the reports of the incident, adding that its navy had every right to operate in the Chinese waters. Now, three Russian battleships also entered close to the Japanese water, but Japan said they did not violate any rules. Japanese and Chinese Coast Guard vessels frequently face off around the islands as both sides press their claims to the territory. Well, more international news now. Here is the Global Buzz. 22 people were killed and over 70 others injured in two separate bomb blasts in Baghdad. One of the attacks took place in a commercial street where a car packed with explosives blew up, killing at least 15 people. Another suicide car bomb targeted a main army checkpoint in Taji, just north of Baghdad, killing seven soldiers. The attacks come as Iraqi forces are trying to dislodge Islamic State militants from Fallujah. After halting their operations on the outskirts of Fallujah last week, the Iraqi forces began making progress towards the city, which is an Islamic State stronghold. On Wednesday, the security forces bombarded multiple targets of the militant groups as they advanced into the inner city area. Meanwhile, the United Nations has launched a massive aid operation for thousands of civilians who are trapped there. So, Somali Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab killed 43 Ethiopian soldiers in an attack on a base of African Union's AMISOM force. The group said its members were also killed in the raid which saw heavy exchange of gunfire. AMISOM force say that they were successfully repelled the attack and were still in charge of the base. Chad has sent uh, 2,000 soldiers to Niger to fight against Boko Haram. The move came after Niger President uh, met with his uh, Chadian counterpart to call for urgent support in the fight against the group, which has inflicted heavy losses and displaced tens of thousands of people in the country. Names of four new chemical elements have been uh, proposed to be added in the periodic table. The new names uh, will undergo a five-month public review, after which it will be confirmed by the IUPAC and permanently added to the periodic table. 
And now time to get you all the sporting action. Here is the sports beat. World Championship medalist Anju Bobby George has accused the Kerala Sports Minister of harassing and insulting her. She met the Kerala Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan and lodged a complaint against the minister E.P. Jairan. Now Anju, who is uh, the president of the Kerala Sports Council, alleged that the minister told her and her fellow athletes that they are corrupt. Indian tennis star Rohan Bopana has reached the quarterfinal of the men's doubles in uh, Rico Open in the new, with the new partner Nicolas uh, Mahout in Netherlands. The top-seeded Indo-French pair defeated their unseeded rivals uh, Robbie Hasse and Guillermo Garci Lopez 6-1, 6-4 in the opening round. Butterflies were released in honour of boxer Muhammad Ali in his uh, hometown of Louisville, Kentucky on Wednesday. The release was a symbolic gesture to honour Ali, who famously boasted he could uh, float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. He died last week on Friday at the age of uh, 74 and will be laid to rest at Louisville's historic uh, Cave Hill Cemetery tomorrow. Real Madrid forward Cristiano Ronaldo on Wednesday became the first footballer ever to top Forbes' list of highest-earning athlete of the year. Ronaldo earned $88 million in the last 12 months, $6.6 million more than second-placed Lionel Messi. Notably, notably, this is the first time since the year 2000 that someone other than Tiger Woods or Floyd Mayweather has topped the list. Brazil defeated Haiti 7-1 at the Orlando Citrus Bowl in Copa America on Thursday. Philippine Coutinho, Renato Augusto, Gabriel Barbosa and Lucas Lima were the goal scorers for Brazil. Now Coutinho scored his first international hat-trick. James Vaseline also scored a consolation goal for Haiti in the 70th minute. Well, that's all in this edition of news. Thanks for watching.